Hello YouTube, it's time for part one. We're covering area one of the uh, shelf tutorial DIY series. And uh, I wanted to start all of these videos that I gonna, I'm gonna do uh, really should start with the simplest of tools. And uh, I'm gonna show you those right now. Uh, it's gonna be a paper and a pencil. And for paper, what I use is I use basically a backer board. Uh, I'm going to write on here uh, and I'm going to plan things out. So these tools are going to be the most important tools in your toolbox. All right, guys. So what kind of shelf are we looking for? How, how do I do this? I'm basically going in. I'm looking for the Rubbermaid shelf system. It's in the closet in the organizer section of your uh, big box store or really anywhere. Probably uh, Walmart would carry these. But I like going to Home Depot or Lowe's. You'll see why. And I'm looking for these, um, these particular shelves right here. Now they sell different configurations. Uh, this is an older one and uh, you see it has openings basically so you can slide your coat hanger uh, back and forth, all right? And this is another style. These are both examples of styles that don't work because we're utilizing this section right here to hold our comic books, all right? So bad, bad good right there these little spaces here that's the gold mine that's what we're looking for very easy to find when i went to home depot i found these but they were only about this thick and i don't like that silver likes them to be this way because you can fit more comic books safely on there so you say Wait a minute, Silver, that doesn't look like your comic display rack because it's upside down and backwards. So this is what you see in the store, okay? You see this type of system where these are going to hang like so, okay? There's your bracket that's holding it up. All right, you see how that goes in? And this is what you're going to see in the store. In one of the displays I point out, you'll see where they advertise this as a linen shelf. Okay, so how do you make that into a linen shelf? You turn it upside down. Boom, it's upside down. And then you say, well, that doesn't look right. And then Silver says, now you only attach it at the wall. And what do you get? Comic book display. Right there, that's all we're doing, guys. This whole video, we're just attaching it at the top. And this whole thing in my comic room is going to free float, all right? It's going to be the angle that you decide. You can prop a beer can behind there, a little piece of wood, a block, whatever you want. That is what we're building. The greatest thing is you can measure this stuff before you start. Go to Lowe's or, you know, whichever store you choose and... Uh, they will have a bolt cutter there. So if you need a piece uh, that is exactly seven foot, six and a half inches, uh, you can buy the eight foot piece and someone there, one of the associates in the store will cut it for you to exactly that length. So when you get home, you don't have to mess with bolt cutters or hacksaws or any of that kind of mess. All right, YouTube. So now we're in Silver's Garage. Uh, I'm narrating this section because I went a little bit wordy uh, and I reduced four and a half minutes down to about a minute, hopefully. Um, really a, a tape measure and a pencil, those are two of the most important things you're gonna have. That is gonna make the project successful. Uh, you can use a level, I didn't, but uh, it's helpful. Stud finder tells you if you're drilling into wood or if you're drilling into a cavity. So uh, something you wanna have, a drill, it's really a necessary tool. You can get away without one, uh, but it makes the project go a lot easier. Uh, the drill bits you're going to want to use are going to be slightly smaller than the screw or the anchor. Okay, you don't want to gouge out the hole. Uh, you want to leave something for the uh, uh, for the screw or for the anchor to grip onto. Uh, so as you can see here, you just size it up. Use something a little smaller. Uh, this is the anchor I use. These these are the bracket I use. These came with an anchor, like you can see here in the picture. Uh, but what I did in a couple of these, I just cut off using the utility knife. I cut off the anchor part uh, because I was going into a stud. Uh, you don't need the anchor if you're going into a stud. 
Uh, hammer's helpful if you're tapping in the anchor, uh, but not necessary. And if you get these things pre-cut at Home Depot or Lowe's, you don't need a hacksaw, you don't need bolt cutters. Uh, either of those are certainly uh, necessary if you're buying a long length of shelving or using an existing piece you want to cut down. That's how you cut the shelf, but not necessary if you're measuring the project out and you're getting them cut exactly to what you need. So let me show you what we're working with here. I've taken a, a few of these things apart. Uh, the grading desk, normally I have this shelf system right here for bags and boards. I took that away so I can show you a little bit more. Uh, so basically what I've done is I've mapped out my display area and I've taken pertinent measurements, okay? And the, the measurements that are important here is the height and the width, okay? And uh, depth is also important. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, because we're going to have, the way I've built these shelves, I have them at a couple of different uh, angles, all right? And there's, I, I'd like to say, oh, I planned the angles out way ahead. I knew I had uh, space for two shelves. Uh, I went out and I bought the tools and equipment and the, and the pieces I needed, and, uh, and I'll talk about those in a second. But basically, from the side, you can, can maybe see there that these are on different angles. This one uh, is... Uh, you know, laid out. It, it pops out from the wall quite a bit. This one isn't isn't quite as much. This is a steeper angle uh, than what we have up above, and that is for a reason. Uh, I did plan that out, but I didn't spend a lot of money to accomplish that. Uh, so the reason I did that is that, frankly, if the bottom shelf is popped out a long way, it takes up part of the grading desk. I lose a little bit of my workspace, and I didn't want to lose workspace, so uh, I have a different angle on the bottom shelf than I have on the top shelf. Uh, it's part of the reason when I'm walking across the room, you have different glare levels uh, because those are pointing uh, basically at, at different areas of the, of the room and the lighting hits them differently. And that's okay. Um, in building this, I, I truly think this is going to be the most common type of shelving most people will use. Uh, I'm gonna gonna splice in here a little bit of my shopping trip. All right, guys. So we're here at Lowe's, and I want to show you the shelving. I actually went to Home Depot first, and unfortunately, what I found was this type of shelving, and uh, made by Rubbermaid. Okay, so same company. It's just a matter of what its store chooses to carry. And the only problem with this style shelving is this lip. Uh, it's not very thick, so. Uh, the way I'm doing my shelves, you can do it with that type of, uh, of arrangement, but you're not going to get a whole lot of books on that shelf. This is the kind we're going to focus on, which says it's linen shelving, but, but we'll see. The ones to avoid are shelves like this, where there's no center tines in here. The books will fall through. Uh, I like that these uh, big box stores have uh, different lengths. So these, if I'm correct, are 12 foot lengths. Okay, starts, this is the one we're working on right here. You can get up to 12 feet. This is going to be an 8 foot length right there. And they're going to have 6 foot options. And then this store, they have this power um, uh, bolt cutter. Uh, you can come right here. Someone from the store will come. They'll key unlock this thing and they will uh, do the cutting for you. Uh, this 12 foot length, if you buy one of them, is $15.48. So, uh, obviously, if you need two six foot shelves that's perfect for 15 bucks you get your two six foot shelves uh, it's right there this is uh, right here gonna be a six foot length okay and that has the time configuration that we're talking about on the bottom so you can fit lots of books on that without them falling back it provides back support that six foot length is 798 and the eight foot length over here is 1048 so that gives you an idea uh, of of the different options they have okay as for hardware um, what you're going to be using uh, is you're going to come down here let's find the little doodads these are those shelf brackets i was telling you about so here they're uh four four dollars and 48 cents for two of them not too bad you could zip tie something on there uh, and they have different styles of, of clamps uh, they have this which gets screwed down it's really forcing in there that really won't work uh, because it holds the shelf, in my opinion, too close to the wall. What you're looking for is you're looking for this type of a bracket. 
Uh, and if you don't need the anchor on it back here, you can actually just clip that off and just use this front part by itself. You can get rid of this screw cover too if you want. Uh, that's not necessary. When I went to Lowe's, I was very happy to see that Lowe's had all the options. And what I was looking for was a thicker front. That's what this is basically, is it's a closet shelf that I'm using upside down and backwards and on an angle. Uh, normally this would be flipped. This would be the front outside. And this back here I'm tapping on would be the top. That's where your sweaters would be sitting. I've just, you know, kind of inverted it and I'm using it backwards to create a support system for the comic books so that when I set them in here, they're being supported fully. Okay, there's no part of that book that's going to sag backwards. Uh, I'm not trusting gravity with my books, uh, you know, to protect them. So I'm putting this full-on support system right back there behind the books. Okay, uh, the couple of accessories that you're going to need, uh, you're going to need these anchors, which I'll show in the shopping video. They're very inexpensive. Literally for this, uh, it is uh, 78 and a half inches long. Okay, 72 inches is six foot. So uh, basically on this, what I did is I bought uh, a couple of eight foot pieces and I cut them down. Uh, at the store, they have a bolt cutter uh, where you, if you're shopping at Home Depot or Lowe's, where you can custom cut them right there. An associate will do them for you. Uh, if you have your own bolt cutter, Silver Age Dave has one. It's basically a giant pair of scissors for metal. Uh, if you have that, you can bring the shelves back to your room and you can cut them yourself. But if you plan ahead, if you have the measurement that you need those shelves to be 78 and a half inches, they will cut them exactly the length for you so it is perfect. Um, you're gonna need a bump out of some sort. Uh, I think Vin Crew has these in his room. That's what he uses. And uh, But he has them, if memory serves me, flush to the wall. They're very high up. Uh, so you really need to keep them flush if they're going to be at ceiling level so you can see the books clearly. Um, but what he did, he employed a method where he has a piece of wire, uh, very light gauge wire that extends from one end here all the way across to the other end. And that way uh, his books aren't going to flop forward on them. Okay, but if you have these bumped out a little ways, the books aren't going to bump out because of gravity. Gravity is going to going to hold them steady. So you're going to need some type of bump out system. This is a shoe shelf uh, bracket that they sell with the Rubbermaid products at Home Depot and Lowe's and Menards and all those things. And I'm actually using this upside down and backwards. Uh, there's nothing holding that to the wall. It's literally, it's just resting there. Uh, but I didn't need something to be structurally solid. I just needed something to hold it out from the wall. And I think I have three of them on this top level. Uh, the other piece I have is I have these little caps. Whenever you cut these Rubbermaid shelves, uh, what you're going to be left with is a sharp piece of metal. You know, and you can cut these with a hacksaw too. I should mention that. Uh, but bolt cutters are, are certainly going to be the easiest. If you plan it ahead, they'll do it for you, like I say at the store. Uh, these caps, you get them in a pack of 100 for a couple of bucks. And there's two different sizes you'll need. This is the larger size. This is the smaller size. Depends on the wire that's being cut, uh, which size you need. Uh, on my bottom shelf, I went simple. Uh, I didn't need this shelf bumped out as far. I was trying to figure out, what do I put in there? Do I cut a 2x4? Do I cut a board? What do I do? And it ended up being a Bud Light can was just perfect. So that's what I used. Not saying that's perfect for you. You could zip tie something in there. You can use screws. You can use brackets. You can do whatever you want. Uh, make it as simple or as difficult. I just went simple. Uh, once the comic books are there, you really don't see those anyway, uh, so it's effective. And this shelving is not going to bend or angle. I mean, this stuff is, is good for my lifetime anyway. It, it's never going to give. Uh, the most structurally strong part of the, of the whole shelf is what's supporting that, uh, that treasure, uh, you know, that you're putting on it. And I think it's the least intrusive because literally I have one, two, three holes. That's it. And of the three holes I made, what you'll notice is I don't even have screws in these. Uh, the first two are literally, there's an anchor that, that goes into the wall. Uh, those I, I used a stud finder. Those go into studs. So those things are strong as strong can be. This one is into drywall. 
there's not a stud behind it. So I did put a support screw to spread that anchor out. Uh, but shy of that, this whole project degree of difficulty is easy, okay? I didn't need to use a level because of the space I, I'm putting them in. I had the window sills and I had the chair rail to give me level lines. Now, I probably did have a level when I put it up, uh, but that's how silver rolls. Uh, but I didn't need it. But you can get a, a little bullet level for a couple of bucks, and that's going to get you close enough. If you have a laser level, that's great. That's going to map out the whole, the whole room for you. Uh, degree of difficulty easy if you have an old guy like silver in your neighborhood and you don't have any tools you can reach out to him say hey i gotta hang these things and uh you know you can show him this video and he'll know just how to do it and, and i know i will work for beer and uh probably most of them old guys you know the one it's got that garage with all the tools in there you see the table saw out every spring fixing and doing stuff he's got those tools so um so that's how it is uh, that's video one in the series. I'm going to show you my walkthrough at Lowe's and Home Depot and show you what I found. Um, this wall as it is, I'm guessing 25 bucks. Uh, I can probably get 30 books on each shelf if I wanted to. I don't have 30 right now. I just have the ones that are displayed. What's that? Maybe 12. You can get across and see them all the way. Vincrew does it. You can probably get 20 across there, uh, but Vincrew's got the collection. Uh, I don't think there's a room big enough. He'd need to be at the Smithsonian to, to display all his, his uh, treasures. But silvers, they work just fine on this. Uh, hopefully the video helps. Uh, feel free to send me questions if you have them, and I'm happy to answer them uh, in any way I can. The next set in this video series is going to be on this display, which you say, man, that looks too easy, silver. Why would you need to talk about that? You'll find out in the next video. Uh, for now, if you have any questions, please email me. I'm always available uh, if I'm available. If I'm not available, then I'm never available. That's how it works. It's very simple. Uh, Silver Edge Dave, thanks for watching, guys. Silver's out. Thank you so much. Um, Silver Edge Dave, video DIY. DIY. I might have messed that up. Um, We'll do that part again. Uh, the other thing you want to buy, and I don't think I, I cover these when I'm in the store, is you want to buy these caps. Okay, when you cut metal, uh, Spider Gwen there is getting in my way a little. Who would imagine? All right, guys, so that's the shelf tutorial. Uh, DIY number one is in the can. Uh, this will be coming out, uh, well, I guess right now when you see it. Isn't that funny?